Universal's most captivating theme park, filled with its most cutting-edge attractions, from the prehistoric roars of Jurassic Park to the spellbinding streets of Hogsmeade, each land beckons with its own unique adventure. Hi, I'm the Frugal Brit, and in this video I'll be taking you on a tour of all attractions that Universal Islands of Adventure 2024 has to offer. Without further ado, let's dive in. The adventure begins at Universal City Walk at the entrance to the park, where you're greeted by the sight of the towering Pharos Lighthouse. The turnstiles take you into the port of entry land, the park's welcoming gateway, designed to evoke a bustling marketplace. At the end of the avenue, you'll come to the Islands of Adventure Lagoon, which teases the park's different lands that await exploration. Venturing westward to begin our attraction tour, we'll come to Marvel Superhero Island, where guests are transported into the Marvel comic book world, with its vibrant colours, bold lines, and larger-than-life character representations, and with Marvel heroes regularly parading through the streets with meet-and-greet opportunities. The first ride you'll come across is the Incredible Hulk coaster that captures the essence of Bruce Banner's transformation into the Hulk, featuring a commanding 3,700-foot track with the loops that dominate the park skyline. After dropping all belongings off in the nearby lockers, guests board the ride's bright green vehicles before being thrust by a gamma accelerator into the heart of the action with a gravity-defying zero-g roll. A 105-foot drop provides a thrilling descent, leading into the dynamic cobra roll that sweeps gracefully over the sparkling lagoon. The excitement climaxes as the coaster dives into a mist-filled tunnel, only to burst into the light within an adrenaline-pumping corkscrew and towering vertical loop, followed by a series of turns and corkscrew to end the circuit. Adjacent to the Hulk coaster is the Storm Force Accelatron Classic Cup-style spinning ride, themed around the X-Men universe, where riders can control the intensity of their pod spin. Continuing along Stanley Boulevard and turning left for Yancey Street, we encounter the Doctor Doom's Fearful Tower Launch ride, another prominent feature in the park skyline. Guests enter into Doctor Doom's sinister laboratory. Once strapped into the seat, riders are launched skyward 185 feet in the air at rapid speeds providing a moment of weightlessness at the peak with spectacular views of the park, its descent just as exhilarating with a series of drops and bounces that add to the thrill. Last but not least for Marvel Superhero Island is the pioneering Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man indoor 3D simulator ride. As guests step into the Daily Bugle, they're quickly informed of an action-packed narrative where Spider-Man's most formidable foes have joined forces in their attempts to steal the Statue of Liberty. After donning 3D glasses and boarding the ride vehicles, guests experience cutting-edge 3D technology and synchronised special effects, immersing you into the heart of a superhero battle through the streets of Manhattan, culminating in a simulated freefall rescued by Spidey's webs, all of which solidifies the ride's reputation as one of Universal's best attractions. Advancing north from Marvel Superhero Island, we enter Toon Lagoon, a water-themed area inspired by classic newspaper comic strips, characterised by its colourful, exaggerated cartoon art style translated into real buildings and settings, its main purpose being to offer respite from the Florida heat. We'll start with the island's most recognisable attraction, Dudley Do-Right's Ripsaw Falls, inspired by the Dudley Do-Right cartoon that not many have heard of these days. Riders board log-shaped boats and set off sloshing through the cartoon-like scenery, featuring the ride's namesake character and snidely whiplash, experiencing several small drops and later climaxing with a 75-foot plunge that guarantees a splash and exhilarating finish to the ride. I believe it's one of the steepest log flume drops in the world and offers a brief moment of airtime, adding to the thrill. For those less keen on such thrills and spills, spectators can enjoy a fantastic view of the splashdown from the nearby bridge. To the east of Ripsaw Falls, Popeye and Bluto's Bill Drap Barges invite you on an adventurous river raft ride, which takes guests into the zany world of the famous Captain Sailor Popeye. After boarding, you'll journey through the ride's playful scenery and choppy waters to save a damsel in distress, with unexpected twists and waterfalls that will absolutely guarantee a good soaking. Unlike Disney, Universal doesn't really care how soaked you get. Adding to the fun or misery are water cannons controlled by guests atop the me ship the Olive Play area. Further down, you'll come across an 18-foot spraying octopus before a slow trip through Bluto's boat washing machine. The remaining attraction in Toon Lagoon is the Me Ship the Olive, a multi-level play structure resembling a ship where kids can engage in various interactive activities, including opportunities to soak guests on the previously covered ride and its upper deck offering panoramic views of the park. Sandwiched in between Toon Lagoon and Jurassic Park is Skull Island, an area dedicated to the legendary King Kong, containing just the one attraction known as Skull Island Reign of Kong with its impressive Kong facade. Guests queue through an ancient temple, home to a Kong-worshipping tribe, later boarding an open-sided 72-seat expedition vehicle which takes you into a maze of caves and caverns filled with prehistoric creatures portrayed through a combination of physical effects and 3D screens, the climax involving a battle between a T-Rex and King Kong, later culminating 
culminating in a face-to-face -face encounter with a giant Kong animatronic, which for many is the highlight of the attraction. From the mysterious Skull Island, we'll transition to the thematic opposite Seuss Landing Island to the east of the park over the lagoon, which brings to life the beloved stories for Dr. Seuss, filled with vibrant colours and fantastical architecture and playful atmosphere, and the distinctive absence of straight lines in its design. The most beloved characters can be seen singing and dancing through Dr. Seuss stories with the opportunity to meet them after the show. There's an interactive playground where Dr. Seuss's imaginative creatures come to life in a colourful hands-on exploration zone. It has one of my favourite universal snack locations, the Green Eggs and Ham Cafe, with its menu centred around creative tater tots dishes. We'll start the attractions with the Cat in the Hat cartoon dark ride located inside the cat's giant red hat. Guests board couch-shaped vehicles for a vibrant journey that brings Dr. Seuss's beloved story to life, recreating the mischievous adventures of the cat, faithfully following the original story, enhanced by animated figures, engaging narration and various special effects. Moving on to the Caro Seuss L Merigo Round Ride, where instead of horses, riders can choose from a variety of Seuss characters with some interactive elements. Opposite is the One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish Aerial Carousel Ride, where riders pilot colourful fish-shaped vehicles that soar and dive around a central axis, all heightened by synchronised fountains and music. Next, we'll ascend to the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride, located towards the top of the land. It offers a slow-moving ride along one of its twin tracks, with a different experience dependent on the chosen route, one of which involves a journey through the Circus McGurkis Cafe Stupendous, later treating riders to charming views of the park and Seuss Landing, accompanied by animatronic characters and playful rhymes and stories from Dr. Seuss. Travelling north from Seuss Landing, we'll come to the Lost Continent, a land steeped in myths and legends, drawing heavily from Greek, Middle Eastern and Mediterranean influences. A very small land these days since the expansion of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, but still contains the Mythos Restaurant, which many consider to be the best restaurant at Universal, as covered in my Top 15 Restaurants Guide video. For a long time, its sole attraction was the Poseidon's Fury high-tech theatre attraction, known for its elaborate theming and special effects, including its impressive water vortex tunnel, but it was perfect permanently closed in May 2023 with no information on what could replace it. Some are speculating that the Wizarding World could be expanded even further, but one rumour that has captured the imagination of Universal fans is a Legend of Zelda experience. Personally hoping for a trackless Zelda themed dark ride, but not holding my breath. Leaving behind the Lost Continent, we'll head to Hogsmeade, Universal's first Wizarding World of Harry Potter land. Guests enter through an imposing gate in a snow-covered village. You can explore shops brimming with magical wares, sample the famous butterbeer at the Three Broomsticks restaurant, and you can purchase interactive ones that bring the surroundings to life. There's a branch of the Ollivander's One Shop, where inside a random guest, usually a child, is chosen to participate in a one-choosing ceremony, closely following the scene from the first movie. The standout feature is, of course, the famous Hogwarts Castle, with its towering spires and steeples, creating a dramatic skyline that can be seen from various points around the park. This is not just a backdrop for Hogsmeade, as it contains one of the park's main headliner attractions, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. To begin the adventure, you'll enter through the castle's winged gates and takes you through one of Universal's most elaborate queues, featuring the greenhouse, Dumbledore's office and the Defence Against the Arts classroom. As you navigate the corridors, you'll encounter the talking portraits, engaging in their usual gossip. The queue is an attraction of itself, but there is a ride inside, which takes guests on a four and a half minute journey through the school grounds, dodging dragons and dementors with a combination of simulator screens, animatronics and roller coaster technology. Be warned, this ride is pretty notorious for inducing motion sickness. Depending on the time of day, exiting the attraction might coincide with the nighttime lights at Hogwarts Castle, a stunning show that bathes the castle in spectacular lights and projections, celebrating the four houses of Hogwarts. Opposite the castle is the entrance to the flight of the Hippogriff Junior Coaster, where you'll queue past a recreation of Hagrid's hut before boarding the Hippogriff ride vehicles. The ride begins with a slow ascent above the hut, leading to enchanting views of Hogwarts Castle, followed by a drop and a series of twists and turns, before Hagrid's grateful send-off as you disembark. A stone's throw from the castle, the stage for the Frog Choir presents a performance featuring singing frogs and robed choristers. Additionally, the Tri-Wizard Spirit Rally brings together students from the three houses, showcasing their bravery and talents in a spirited display. The main headliner for Hogsmeade, of course, is the Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure Ride Roller Coaster. Through the queue, you'll pass by the edge of the Forbidden Forest, entering the ancient castle ruins filled with magical creatures. Once aboard the motorbike or its sidecar, the ride begins with a rapid acceleration through the Forbidden Forest, 
mimicking the feel of being on a motorbike with the help of the vehicle's impressive audio system. Upon reaching Hagrid's hut, you'll come across the first of many impressive audio animatronics on the ride, including Fluffy the Free-Headed Dog. The ride features a record-breaking seven launches and holds the title of Florida's longest roller coaster, which later takes riders up a vertical spike losing power and dropping backwards at 44 miles per hour. The climax of the ride features an encounter with a centaur and a drop into a cave of glowing scroots. This ride probably edges it in terms of Universal's most popular attraction, generating the longest lines. I'll provide some tips on how best to tackle it in the video description. Rounding off the Wizarding World attractions, we have the Hogwarts Express train ride that connects the park to Universal Studios Florida, as covered in my previous video for that park. The route from Hogsmeade does lack the renowned Platform 9 and 3 quarters, however it does offer a better view of the train arriving at the station. It also provides a distinct ride experience with different scenes and characters. Travelling westward will come to the final land of the tour, the island of Jurassic Park. Entering through the iconic archway, guests are welcomed by lush vegetation and the echoes of lurking dinosaurs for a full immersion into the prehistoric world inspired by the movie series. One of its key areas is Camp Jurassic, a dynamic area dedicated to the younger adventurers, a haven of exploration with an atmosphere that cleverly simulates the dense jungles of a bygone era, a maze of pathways winding through tropical plants. The heart of Camp Jurassic is a network of caves and amber mines where kids can unearth ancient fossils. The entire area designed to be physically engaging with climbing nets and walls suitable for a range of ages. Bridges crisscross overhead, ranging from sturdy wooden walkways to suspension bridges that offer views of the entire area. Located inside Camp Jurassic is the entrance to the Pteranodon Flyers Kids Suspended Coaster, which is infamous for its lengthy wait time due to its painfully low capacity, which isn't compensated by its 80 second ride duration. Also, only an exact pairing of an adult and child will be allowed to ride. After you've braved the queue, you'll be seated in two-person Pteranodon-shaped ride vehicles, rising up to 60 feet in the air over Camp Jurassic, with their feet dangling, whizzing past Skull Island, meandering through Jurassic Park's trees and thatch roofs, ending alongside the island's headliner attraction. A short walk north will come to the Jurassic Park River Adventure, one of the original headliners. The journey begins with a peaceful river raft ride through a lush tropical forest, through the herbivore containment of Jurassic Park, containing a few gentle amphibious dinosaur animatronics. However, the calm soon turns to chaos as your boat drifts into the raptor containment area, mirroring the suspenseful twists of the movie. The climax of the adventure is a face-to-face -face encounter with a T-Rex, followed by an 85-foot drop at a 55-degree angle, with a high chance of getting soaked, especially when sat near the front. Adjacent to the ride, the splash zone offers bystanders a chance to witness the thrilling descent and its massive splash. This leads perfectly into a visit to the Thunder Falls Terrace Quick Service Restaurant, where guests can dine with a view of the dramatic drop whilst indulging in its barbecue cuisine. A short walk away is Raptor Encounter, a meet and greet attraction where guests come face to face with Blue, the trained yet slightly menacing Velociraptor from the Jurassic World movies, a creative twist on the traditional theme park meet and greet. Next we'll head to the Discovery Centre interactive natural history exhibit, modelled after the iconic Welcome Centre from the original movie. As you enter, you're greeted by an impressive atrium that showcases a life-sized replica of a T-Rex. The main floor is home to various exhibits and interactive stations. One of the highlights is the hatching area, where you can witness a baby Velociraptor to being hatched in real time. Next to the Discovery Center is the Jurassic World Velocicoaster, Florida's tallest and fastest launch coaster with speeds of up to 70 miles per hour, still the park's newest headliner attraction. The ride's narrative unfolds with an immersive queue set just before the events of the original Jurassic World movie. Guests encounter familiar characters like Mr. DNA, Dr. Wu, Owen and Claire, seamlessly integrating the queue into the overall experience. As you leave the station, a gentle turn leads into a thrilling pre-launch sequence. As the boosters power up and the Velociraptors break free, you're catapulted from 0 to 50 miles per hour in just 2 seconds, zooming into a loop, diving through intricate rockwork and lush foliage, through more turns and sharp bends. A second launch propels you at 70 miles per hour in 2.4 seconds, sending the train soaring up to its highest point, a 155 foot tall top hat, followed by a dramatic drop at an 80 degree angle, before twisting and turning through a series of overback turns and airtime hills. The climax of the ride is the Mosasaurus roll that inverts Ryaners over water at a thrilling 53 miles per hour, the ride's signature element, which can be seen from the park's entrance in Port of Entry. The ride then climaxes with an off-axis airtime hill, leading to the final brake run. And that concludes our journey through all Islands of Adventures attractions. Thanks for watching. Do let me know if you have any useful ride tips in the comments and be sure to check out my other videos for more insights into the magic of Orlando's theme parks.